What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on Kapokoto 1. This is a short but sweet one and I wasn't quite sure if we were going to put this in the 100 days or if we were going to throw it into the Python projects. And just because this one is kind of short, I decided to put it in the 100 days and not in the Python projects. But with that being said, simple and short doesn't mean stupid. Um, this is actually a really fun program to run on days when you're going to be, you're going to be doing long hours of work. Um, or even if you're at work. This is actually a really fun program to use. So what do we do? So let's start off and I'm going to try to blow this up. We're not going to run anything. We're not going to debug anything. I'm going to go through this line by line and then we'll actually see the program in action. So what I want to show and I will, I'll, I'll blow this up when I actually edit it so you can see it better on the screen. So first off, we're saying import time and then import web browser. So what are those if you don't know them? You can always search in Google. So let's go, let's write Python time. And of course the first document, 15.3 time access and conversions. Ooh, Python two, we wanna stay away from that. So Python three. So I'm gonna blow this up here. So as you can see, this is just all about the module time. Um, and then for functionality, date, time, and calendar, the two biggest ones that you're going to be seeing anyhow. But it tells us what it will do and how you can use it. And these are all of the different functions that exist within the time module. And by all means, you absolutely should get used to reading through documentation of Python module libraries because you're gonna be having, you're gonna be doing projects or working on something and not know which piece to use. Or you may be using something you learned even from me or someone else and then find out that there's a better way to do that. Um, so by all means, you should always go through the documentation, get an idea of what that particular library can do, what its limitations might be, and then how you can manipulate it. Um, and also, uh, what, what is it trying, what is it asking for? What kind of arguments do you have to give it? What kind of keywords uh, is it going to require? Um, and even when we do our web scraping piece, you'll see we utilize that a lot. And we also utilize the time function when we did the Python project um, for blocking computer programs. If you recall, we had to know the exact format of how uh, DT time, like date time dot date time now, how it was working uh, when we were utilizing um, the modules. But this is for time. If we wanted to see date time, this is what we used that other time. We were using uh, date time. This is exactly what we used at other time. It looks on our on our script. It was uh, DT dot now, and that was because we um, from date time import date time as DT because we didn't want to keep writing date time dot date time. Um, but as you can see, it tells you exactly what it's going to do. It tells you what parameters you have to give it, um, and just mammoth amounts of information, way more than anybody online could ever give you, but this is where you want to rock and roll from it. So we're doing time and we also did Python web browser. So that is the other library that we're importing. So by all means, you can run through this, look at the different pieces, see exactly what is it expecting. Um, and then they look at this, they even give you the common errors and what you might be getting. Um, Sweet. You could even specify what browser that you want the individual to be using, and what aspects that you act, what objects you can actually control within this particular library. So, with that being said, let's get back to the code. So, we imported time. We imported web browser. Now we have variable total breaks, and with that, we put an input uh, integer of three, and then we have a variable break count, and we're starting that at zero. So you can see already the program is going to count to three. That's our total amount of breaks we want to take, and we're starting at a count of zero. Makes sense so far. Then we're printing out on the screen this program started on, and then we want it to add time dot c time open and close, which just means current time. So it's going to get that current time from my own system here. And as you can see, I ran this before. It says this program started on Sunday, May 28th, 12 to 31 at 2017. Whew, thank God. I thought I didn't the year for a second. Um, so we're going to print that out and then it's going to give us the current time. And now this is where the, the conditional comes in. While break count is less than total breaks, and this is what we're going to do. So this only runs when break count is less than total breaks. And we're starting that way, right? Because our break count zero and our total breaks is three. So while break count is less than total breaks, time.sleep 15. So from the time module that we imported, uh, we want to use the method.sleep and 15. And if you looked at the uh, documentation for the time library, you would see that dot sleep, you're putting in seconds. So this means 15 seconds. And then we have, so what's going to happen is while it's zero, while break count is less than total breaks, I want you to sleep for 15 seconds. So, so far we are true based on this here. We are true 
and then we can say, okay, we'll sleep for 15 seconds, which just means that the program is not going to execute to the next line, so it's going to wait. That's exactly what this means. So I, sh I should put that in so people have a further reference. So 15 seconds of program pausing in, its, in essence, it's, it's going to sleep for 15 seconds. And then what it's gonna do after 15 seconds, we're calling web browser dot open. So from the web browser module we imported dot open, we're gonna use the method uh, of the function open on from web browser. And then if you looked up the documentation of this, it would tell you what it wants passed. And as a string, it wants the full web locations. This could be any web location that you wanted it to open. And I'll show you that. We're just using YouTube uh, because it's fun. If, if The whole point of this program was to force you to take breaks. So at certain time intervals, of course not 15 seconds, you get nothing done, but this is just for an example purpose. But every, uh, you know, I don't care, it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, you want the program to automatically open um, a web browser. And we're using YouTube because you could have a funny video, you could have music, you could have something else you want to watch. Uh, it could be uh, any website, any HTTP that you want to utilize, you can put in there and it's going to automatically open. And that's your way to say, oh, it's, it's break time. And then we just have break count plus equals one, which is the same as break count equals break count plus one. And all this last line of code here is doing is it's going to, each time it runs this loop, when it goes one, two, three, when it gets to here, it's gonna go from zero to one. And then when it gets down here again, it's gonna go one to two. And then when it gets down here a third time, it's gonna go two to three. And now we have three equals three. And then when we get while break count is less than total breaks, and it's gonna say false. And our code's gonna stop just like that, it's just gonna stop right after that. Um, this can be used for your own productivity, annoy somebody, and I, but I say annoy somebody here, it doesn't know what's running. Um, showing time dragon, uh, I'm not even gonna utilize dragon. Ah, uh, I don't think I am, let me look real quick while, while we're all here. Did I do it for dragon? I, I don't recall. Oh, we do have dragon, all right, so I will use, I'll do dragon after this as a separate video. Um, because it does use the time library as well. But with that being said, how could you annoy somebody with this? It's very simple. You could um, have this running in the background and while they're sitting there trying to work or be productive, you have websites opening up every 15 seconds or so, uh, annoying the living hell out of them. So uh, by all means, I caution you with this because it's gonna appear like a virus if you do it. But if you're there with the person, it is kind of fun to mess with them for a little bit. And show off your coding skills. You know, look how look how powerful I am. I can take control of your computer. So with that being said, let's run it. So as you can see down here for Chrome, I don't have anything open right now. So I'm actually going to. We have take a break in our piece here. I'm going to run it, and it tells me when it started. This program started on, and if you started counting 15 seconds, it's going to open the first web browser, and we're going to keep waiting because then we should get a total of three browsers that open, all going to that same YouTube address. So for the longest, there we go. So there's the first 15 seconds, so it's gonna keep counting. Little commercial here. And there's the second one, so another 15 seconds passed. And we're still waiting. And we'll get our final, our final, uh, tab here. There we go. There it is. So a total of 45 seconds of run. I'm sure the longest 45 seconds of your life because 15, 15, and 15. Um, but that's it. Once you close it out, it's not going to keep doing anything else. You can see that I don't even have the stop option because the program, it, it executed. It's done because this had gone to three. Uh, and if you don't know what I mean by that, um, I will just quickly, uh, and I mean quickly, run through the debug here. So nope, give me the console. So we're going through breaks, three, zero, print. Yep, you'll print that out. Total time sleep, so it's gonna wait 15 seconds. And we're actually gonna to have to wait 15 seconds. When it, when it comes up, I'm, actually, I'm just gonna pop it. Waiting, waiting, waiting. I use this on my wife all the time to mess with her. So I went for 15, web browser open. Now it opens the web browser and break count equals one. So you can see here we're at zero. When I hit this though, it's gonna go up to one because it increases it by one. Same thing, we're going. It's gonna wait 15 seconds before it allows me to debug again. If I if I was really smart, I would have changed this to like three seconds when I was going through debugging. So I, I apologize. 
I probably still could, but I only, I only want to show this to you one more time. So there we go, and just watch the break count up top. As we go through this, shut up. As we go through this, we're gonna go to, from one to two. And then it would do this one more time and it would be done. So if you wanna sit there and say, um, every every 30 minutes, you know, you, you wanna take a break. Well, in three minutes, you'd have 180 seconds, and then you can just put on another one and go to 30 minutes. So then that's what it would do. So when, what it would do is it would run through once at 30 minutes from when you start it. It would open the first window. And let's say you have a 10-minute break or a 10-minute video you're watching. You can close it out, and then 20 minutes later, it'll open up another one. And then you close it out, and then 30 minutes. So we'll just do it three times based on what your uh, time parameter in seconds that you're going to put inside of the parentheses there. Um, so with that being said, that's it for now. Like I said, I'm going to throw this in the 100 days of Python videos. And um, I am going to show you just this time module one more time in a small program that, that called Dragon. It comes from a Dragon game piece. But the game is kind of simplistic and it doesn't warrant its own entire video. So it's just going to tag on to this one. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a great day and I will see you next time.